This is the first video in a series of videos about Word 2013 Unit C. After completing this series of videos, you should be able to format with fonts, use the Format Painter, change line and paragraph spacing, align paragraphs, work with tabs, work with indents, add bullets and numbering, adding borders and shading, and inserting online pictures. Now throughout this unit, what we're going to be doing is, is that we're going to be taking a look at a two-page flyer, which is going to be advertising last-minute specials for the October tours for the Quest Specialty Travel. Now that this document has already been formatted for us uh, on there, we want to make sure that we format it additionally so that it is very attractive and highlights the significant information. Now when you go to course sites and you download the file, it may open up in what we call the protected view. And what that is is that this is similar to our reading view that's on there. To be able to modify this, all we need to do is, is click on this enable editing and that will take us to the view of Word that will allow us to edit uh, the document. Now if we take a look on page Word 50, and this is going to be formatting with fonts. And of course, formatting text with fonts is a quick and powerful way to enhance the appearance of a document. A font is a complete set of characters with the same typeface or design, which could be such as Arial, Times New Roman, Courier, Tahoma, or Calibri are some of the most common fonts, but there are hundreds of others, each with a special design and feel. Of course, another way to change the appearance of text is to increase or decrease its font size. And of course the font size is just how big the text is. Now the font size is measured in what we call points. And each point is 1 72nd of an inch. So if we were to have a size 72 point font, we would have one inch letters. Now our first uh, step on page word 50 is to open up uh, this file of the WDC1 and open this up from course sites. Now remember you may have to click on that enable uh, editing to be able to edit this document. Once you have that done what we do want to do is we want to do a save as on here. So we're going to click on file and save as and you're going to save this to the area to which you normally save your documents whether it's the home directory or whether it's your my documents but you go ahead and click on the area in which you want to do that and we're going to be saving this file as WDC last minute deals so we're going to go through here and just type in this new file name of WDC last minute deals and then we're going to click on save to save our document now the next thing that we want to do there, still on step one, is we want to increase up the zoom level to 120%. So we can go down here to our zoom slider and click on our plus sign two times to zoom this in to 120%. Now of course notice the name of the font used in the document, and we can always find that up here in the uh, font drop down box here. And of course we notice that it's Calibri and that is displayed in what we call the font list box in the font group. Now the word body which is in parentheses next to it is the font list uh, in the font list box indicates that Calibri is the font used for the body text in the current theme and this theme is the default theme. Now a theme is a related set of fonts, colors, styles, and effects that is applied to an entire document and gives it a cohesive appearance. The font size uh, on there is directly to the right of the font list arrow, or list box I should say, and we notice that it is 11 on there, and so that this is an 11 72nd of an inch because that is an 11 point font. Step two tells us that we need to scroll the two, uh, throughout the document to get a feel for its content. So we can take a look down and we can look through this and kind of say, okay, uh, we can get an idea for some of the different things that are in here. So we see that we do have some headings, we have some paragraphs, uh, looks like we may have some lists and everything that's on there as well. Uh, so we're taking a look just kind of getting an idea. Now to go back up to the top of the document, we want to hit our control key 
plus our home key and that takes us back to the top of the document. Next in step two we want to press our control in A and when we press control A that's going to select the entire document and now what we want to do is we want to click the font list arrow in the font group and of course that's the little down pointing arrow in the font list box. Now this font list is going to show the fonts available on your computer. Now you can always download more fonts uh, or install new font packages to get more fonts onto your computer. Now the font names are formatted uh, in the font so you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. And of course the font names can appear in more than one location on the font list. And of course generally we'll see that we may have at the top our theme fonts which kind of goes right along with the uh, theme that we've got chosen on here, which in this case is the default. We could take a look at some recently used fonts, which you may or may not have those. And then of course then we have all fonts underneath there, and of course those are listed out alphabetically. Now there are two types of fonts uh, on here, and we, have, and we can classify them into two main categories. We have what we call serif fonts, which has a small stroke uh, at the ends of the letters, and that's what we call a serif. And if we take a look at an example here, if we would go down to Times New Roman, and if we just scroll through here, and of course, once again, this is alphabetic, uh, if we go down here to uh, Times New Roman, we notice that at the end of the T, notice that there's these little marks right through here and then at the bottom, and of course, every one of the characters has some kind of little font, uh, especially the capital letters on there, uh, and those are what we call serifs. Uh, they kind of make it look a little bit more formal, a little bit more fancy that's on there. Now, otherwise, we do have, uh, similar to the style that we have now, and that's the uh, Calibri, and that is what we call a sans serif font uh, on there. And of course, a sans serif font ultimately means no serifs uh, on there. So uh, the examples given out of your textbook mentioned on here that Garamond is a serif uh, font. So if we would look up that here in the uh, area, here's the Garamond. And notice that it has uh, on there, this is a serif font uh, because it does have some little extra marks and everything there. And while Trebuchet MS is a sans serif font. So if we take a look at that one uh, on here and we scroll down a little bit, we notice that this is a sans serif font. Now step three tells us that we need to drag the pointer slowly uh, down the list of font names. Now of course you probably noticed as I was doing that earlier that the document appears to be changing uh, on there. And of course this is what we call the live preview. And of course whenever you point to one of these it makes the document appear in that type of font, you know, what you have selected. And that gives you an idea of what the document's going to look like. So that's what we call uh, the live preview. But we do want to scroll until we get back to the Garamond uh, on there. And of course, those are in the G's uh, on there. So we need to go until we find the Garamond uh, style of font. And here it is right here. Uh, that's G-A-R-A-M-O-N-D. And of course, when we point to that, we notice that the document has that style of font. When we click on it, it then accepts it. Now, whenever you're pointing to these fonts, like I said, it's a preview uh, on there. And it gives you that live preview of the font that would be applied if you select it. Now, if you don't select it, then that's okay because then it will just continue on. And if you would deselect the text, it would go back to the original font. Now, when you do click the font name, it will apply the font to the area or to the text that's on here, and that's where we see that the font of this flyer has now all been changed to the Garamond, as we can indicate here in the font uh, list box. Step four tells us that we now want to click the font size list arrow, and that's the arrow next to the 11 here, and in the font group, and we want to drag the pointer down slowly, uh, you know, we want to do that up and down, until we ultimately get back to the 12. So if we notice that it's giving us the preview as we move up and increase up the font, the font gets bigger. There's our one inch letters right there because remember a point is 1 72nd of an inch. And of course as we move back down, notice the font gets smaller. But we want to click on the number 12. So we want a 12 point font here. 
Now you can also type in this font list box the number uh, or the size of the text box because you notice that not every number is here but uh, you can select any size font you want. Uh, 72 is not the largest font size that is out there. You can type in what number you uh, would particularly want. And of course, once again, as you drag the pointer over a font size, a preview of the font size is applied to the selected text. And of course, once again, it's a preview, not, you know, it's not selecting it until you actually click on it. And of course, when we click on 12, we'll increase the font size of the selected text to 12 points. Step 5 tells us that we want to select the title Quest Specialty Travel Last Minute Travel Deals. So we're going to deselect this text and we're going to select this title right here. Then next, in step 5, we're going to click on the font list arrow and we're going to scroll down until we get to the trebuchet MS. And once again, this is in an alphabetically arranged on there, so we will take this down to the T's. And we see here is trebuchet MS. That's the style font that we want. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And then next we're going to make this a little bit larger, and to do that we're going to click on the font size list arrow and we're going to point down to 22. We'll make this a size 22 font. Then next we're going to add an, the bold uh, on here as well. So in the font group we're going to click on this bold button here and that is the B and that is going to make our text bold. It's going to have a thicker appear to it uh, than regular font. Now step 6 tells us that we also want to go through and change the color. And of course, to do this, we're going to change the color of the text. And we want to click on the font color list arrow. So if we see here, here's an A with a line underneath it. And notice that the line underneath it is red. And that is our font color. If we click on the font color list arrow, we're going to see a gallery of colors uh, here that opens up in this little menu. Now it includes the set of theme colors and a range of tints and shades as well as a set of standard colors. Now you can point to a color in the gallery and preview it just like you did the fonts and the font sizes. So we notice here that we can make the font change its color just by putting our mouse pointer over one of these uh, colors. Now of course to use a different set of theme colors uh, you can click the design tab uh, on here and uh, then you can go uh, and click the colors button in the document formatting group to select a different color set. And of course, once we go up here, we can click on that design to show you where that is at uh, on there. And then, of course, we do have our colors here uh, on there, and we can choose a different theme uh, set of colors on there. But we want to go back to our home tab, and we do want to select uh, one of the colors from this theme right here. Now step 7 tells us that we want to click on the green accent 6 color uh, on there and then we're going to deselect the text afterwards. Now when you point to this, uh, it will give you the color name and it will give you if it's lighter or darker or so forth on there. Now we see that right, this one is the green accent 6, but it's a lighter 40%. Now the one that we want is up here at the very top, which is just a green accent 6. When we click on that, notice that the text has changed colors, and if we deselect the text, we see that there's the color change there. And the color of the title now has been changed to green. And the active color, as we see on here, in the font uh, color button, has also changed to green. Originally it was red, so if we clicked on this main part of the button here, it would have made the text red. But if we want to tell specifically what color that we want to choose, we have to pick the list arrow. Next, on step 8, we want to scroll down our document until we get to the Rashahan Desert Safari. And that is right here, just underneath this trip, state, and cost uh, area right here. So it's about midway down the first page. And it tells us that we want to select this heading, the Rashahan Desert Safari. And then, of course, using the mini toolbar, which appears above here, we're going to change the font on here to trebuchet MS 
And instead of going all the way down, we can take a look here at the recently used fonts, and there it is there. So we can click on this, and that will change the font. Then we want to click on the font size list arrow, and we're going to change this to 14. We're also going to make this bold, so we can click on bold. And then we want to change the color of this text to green. So we're just going to click on this main uh, button right here for the font color. And then of course once we have that we want to deselect the text. And now this heading is formatted in a 14 point trebuchet MS bold with a green color. Once we have that complete we can click on our control and home on our keyboard which will take us back to the top of the document and we're going to click on the save button on the quick access toolbar up here. Now of course remember if the mini toolbar closes anytime you perform any of your actions you can always reselect the text again to open it back up. Now if you look on page word 51 it, uh, it mentions something on here that we're not going to complete in this document uh, but you will need to know for one of your future assignments and this is talking about adding a drop cap and really uh, this is a fun way to illustrate a document with fonts is to add a drop cap to a paragraph and of course a drop cap is a large initial capital letter which is often used to set off the first paragraph of an article now to create a drop cap you need to place the insertion point in the paragraph you want to format so let's say for an example we want to do this top paragraph right here uh, on there so we place our insertion point into this paragraph that we want to format. Then we're going to go up here and click on our Insert tab. Once we click on the Insert tab, then we want to go over here and we want to click on Drop Cap. And of course that is in the text group on there. Now when we click on this, of course we have uh, our Drop Cap options that is going to appear. Now of course we can preview these and we can take a look and see that here's the couple different types of Drop Caps or we can click on the drop cap option and we can be a little bit more specific. We can either make it dropped or we can put it in margin. Now one thing that uh, you will notice is, is that when you bring up a dialog box you will not see the live preview. Uh, you have to accept it and click on OK to get that to be there. But this will tell you, you know, if you want to change your font, you can change whatever your, your font is or how many lines you want it to drop and how far away from the text you want it to be. So those are the options for the drop cap. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on cancel here because we do not want to add a drop cap on here. Now of course once a drop cap is inserted in a paragraph you can modify it by selecting it and then changing the settings in the drop cap dialog box. For even more interesting effects you can enhance a drop cap with font color, font styles, and, or font effects. You can also fill the graphic object with shading or add a border around it. And of course to enhance a drop cap, you first must select it and then experiment using the formatting options available in the font dialog box and in the borders and shading dialog box. And that concludes the information that's on pages Word 50 and 51 uh, for Word 2013 Unit C. In the next video, we will be talking about using the formatting painter.